All right, let's talk about factorization machines. So factorization machines refer to a class of machine learning models um, that were developed in the l very late 2000s. Um, and they were very useful in um, winning the Netflix prize, um, which was going on around that time. And so basically, if we want to understand how the factorization machine model works, we just look at this equation. And this is basically um, just what the model consists of. So um, the setup is you have some um, row of data and some output that you're trying to predict. Um, so x here um, is a vector in Rn and it is some row of data. And we are trying to predict the output y hat. So um, in this model, we define our prediction using this equation. So first of all, we just have some scalar here. Then we add some scalar multiple times each entry of the input vector. Um, so, so far this is just linear. But then we add in this thing, and this is um, what makes the model interesting. And so basically what this does is um, we have a collection of vectors, vi, um, where i ranges from 1 to n. And each of these vectors has k entries. And so that's why when we see here, um, when you take all of these vectors together, you can represent these as a matrix. Um, so this is a matrix in R n by k. So this is a matrix with real number entries with n rows and k columns. So um, each of these, like vi and vj, these refer to row i and row j of this matrix, capital V. All right, and how are these um, vectors, like th the role that they play in the model is that when you take the inner, pr you, you take the inner product of any two different rows and multiply it by the corresponding entries in the input vector. And then you add these all together. Um, so for every single, so for every unique combination of i and j, where i and j are um, distinct integers between one and n, um, we take the dot product of um, v i and v j, then multiply by the ith entry of x, and multiply by the jth entry of x, um, and this of course goes over how the dot product is defined. And so this is interesting because in a way what it's doing is it's sort of, um, it's trying to condense all of the information about um, the, ith, the ith column of your data set or rather the the, the ith um, input um, coordinate of your vector. Um, all of the information um, should be represented in this vector vi. So let's look at a um, let's look at an example data set to um, understand wh exactly what this is doing. So this um, I like when papers have this where they have like a very concrete example. Um, because like with mathematics, the idea is um, the, the power of mathematics come from, comes from abstraction, um, but it takes a while to get used to the abstraction. And so when you can start with something that's very concrete and very straightforward, um, it can really help with understanding. And so I really like this. So this is an example of what your data set might look like. And of course, because this was used in winning the Netflix prize, this is an, is an example of what Netflix data might look like. So here, every row 
um, in your data set represents a distinct tr um, transaction or event. And here the event is um, a rating, a user making a rating on a movie. And so this data set has a bunch of columns. And so um, the columns represent the users, the movies, some other information as well. Um, and then finally you have the target here. So the way that we read this table is, let, let's look at this row of data, for example. We have a one for user A, we have a one for movie TI, we've got some other stuff, and then we've got a five. So basically what this says is user A gave the movie Titanic, which is what TI represents, a rating of five. And so that's what each, each row in this data set represents, a user, a review that a user gave to a movie. And of course, what we want to do is we want to predict the ratings that users might give for reviews. And a couple things worth noting about this data set. Um, note that this matrix is really big um, because you have a separate you have a separate column for each user and a separate column for each movie. Um, and plus like you, it, and it's not just like a single extra column for each movie, but like you've got other movies rated and last movie rated. So like with the way that it's shown here, um, every movie in the Netflix library shows up in three separate columns. So this is a data set with a massive number of columns. And also notice that most of the entries are zero. Um, you're only going to get a one if that entry matches with the column. So like for user A, um, you're going to get a one for all of the rows. For in the column for user A, you're going to get a one in every row where that user made a um, review or gave a rating. But then in every other row corresponding to any other user in the data set, you're gonna have a zero. Um, normally what you might have is you might have a, um, a single column called user and each entry in the column would be a unique value, um, but you can't really model that. Um, so in order to make a model, you need to have, you, you need to expand it. Um, and this is basically using dummy variables if you're familiar with that. Um, uh, and I believe this is one hot encoding. Um, and so basically this gives you a lot of zeros. And so the trouble with models like this is this is a lot of data to work with. And obviously there's a lot of information you can gain from all this data, but because it's so sparse, it's difficult to work with. Um, so that's why um, that's why we use these vectors v, um, where v only has k entries. The idea is that um, you're sort of the the idea is that this matrix v should include a lot of the information that's contained in your sparse data set. And to sort of understand how this is supposed to work ideally in practice. Let's look at an example um, from uh, this data set and an example that's listed here. So basically the idea is that the vectors, um, the VIs, the vectors are supposed to be designed in such a way that taking in our products between two vectors gives you information about the relationship between the corresponding columns. Um, so to understand this better, um, this paragraph gives a really good example. Um, so let's say we want to understand how, um, uh, let's see here, so A for Alice, how Alice is going to rate Star Trek. Um, so Alice has no 
rating for Star Trek. So there's like no way to get this information just from this table. But we know that there is a vector corresponding with column A and a vector corresponding with the column for Star Trek. And so taking the dot product of vector, uh, taking the dot product of the Alice vector and the Star Trek vector should give us information about um, what we think Alice is going to give as a rating for Star Trek. Um, so what do we know about what this inner product is probably going to look like? So um, let's look at a few things. So Bob and Charlie have similar effect factor vectors because they have similar interactions with Star Wars. Um, so let's look at that and verify this. So um, Bob and Charlie, let's, they both have ratings for Star Wars and we have a four and we have a five. And so when this model is trained, ideally it should be trained in such a way that, um, that taking the inner product of um, the Bob vector with the Star Wars ve vector will give you a larger number to help increase the problem to increase the accuracy of this high rating. And similarly, um, taking the inner product of the Charlie vector with the Star Wars vector should also give you a larger number. Um, and so you can imagine that perhaps um, the vectors for Bob and Charlie are going to look somewhat roughly similar, given that they both need to um, yield, a, or they both should yield a larger number when, um, when you take their dot products with Star Wars. All right, so VB and VC should look somewhat similar. Um, but what about VA and VC? So VA and VC, do they have any common movies? Um, yeah, they have Titanic. And Alice gave Titanic a high rating and Charlie did not. And so if these vectors are optimized, taking the dot product of VA with VTI should give you a larger number to capture this larger rating and v VC dotted with VTI should give you a smaller number to capture this smaller rating. And so because the dot products of VA and VC with VTI should give you different values, we can imagine that VA and VC should be different. All right, um, and then let's look at the vac factor vectors for Star Trek and Star Wars. Um, just, I mean, intuitively these should be similar, um, but where is that captured in the data set? It's captured in the data set with Bob. So Bob gave high ratings over here. Bob gave high ratings to both Star Wars and Star Trek. And so the factor vector, so the, yeah, these factor vectors, um, the vectors for Star Wars and Star Trek should be somewhat similar because when you take their dot products with the vector for Bob, they should give you larger numbers. And so in this way, we've sort of connected the dots between Alice and Star Trek um, because we know um, Alice is different from Charlie because they have different ratings for Star Wars. And um, Charlie likes Star Trek. Um, do we know that Charlie likes Star Trek actually? No, we don't. But we can imagine that he would because Charlie likes Star Wars and Star Wars and Star Trek are similar because Bob likes them both. Um, and so Charlie probably likes Star Trek, and so Alice probably doesn't like Star Trek. And so essentially what we've done here is we've done a bunch of um, pairwise comparisons between the columns.
um, to come to a conclusion about um, what the dot product between Alice between the Alice and Star Trek vectors should look like. Um, and so for that reason, um, this model should predict that um, taking the dot product between um, the Alice and Star Trek vectors should give you a smaller number, um, which means that the model would probably predict that Alice not rate Star Trek very highly. Um, and that's what you would sort of expect as a human from looking at this data. And so it's this interesting thing where these vectors, um, typically K is going to be much smaller than N because N is the number of all the different ratings that you have over all users and all movies. Um, and so K is just going to be some number you choose that's going to be much smaller than that. Um, but even though K is so small and you're, you're um, trying to incorporate all of the pairwise interactions for each column, you're trying to contain all of that information in a single vector of size K, um, you're still able to capture a lot of information. And so that's how this model is designed. And let's look into how we actually compute it because it's, there's a lot of interesting things about this model that make it useful um, and are the reason why it's been um, used so much and why it was so successful, successful in the Netflix prize. Um, and so first of all, there's the design where it can um, capture a lot of this pairwise information, but there's also the fact that it is um, relatively cheap to compute. And this section talks about that.